Nimkul Gimbaba. Welcome. One moment, please. You know it's me, you know. <laughs> okay, here I am. Welcome, Baba. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. Last time uh, we spoke, you gave us a wonderful blessing, and I I listened to it several times, and only after several times it, it kind of reached me, and also it reached me only partly. It's a, it's a very, uh, how do you say, multi-layered. It's very, very multi-layered, very mm, deep thing. It's a deep message because you needed some deep thought at that time, yes. And listening to it more than once brings it into many different th thought patterns. And uh, bringing it into all these thought patterns makes you want to think about it even more. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a good, <laughs> good news. Uh, so Kirin Newman is now in India, and she said that the, uh, that the news are that you are back in the body. Ah, yes, I am back in a body, but I have come over for you just to say hello and to bring about the knowledge and inspiration that's necessary for the day. Why would I miss such an opportunity? <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you for coming and um, welcome, <laughs> welcome back to Earth. So why, did you come, why did you come this time? So what's your mission these, these days? Oh, yes, the mission this time is very easy. There is so much light that needs to be given to the world. So much information, so much enlightenment to be given to the world about God and about the way that man interacts with mankind is, is mm, so needed. People are, have become solo entities in this particular world. Families don't matter as much and, and things have, they are, closed off to many of uh, the things that need to be, they mean need to be giving to the world. They are only things that are close to them matters and they need to be looking uh, with greater vision at the world and giving the world mm -mm, greater love and understanding instead of looking at the nasty news and saying that, oh, everything's bad, everything is destruction, everything is negative. So therefore, we have to get in our hearts a positive thought process and let people know that we can help one another. I see this happening many times during disasters. And that is why disasters will continue, is because it brings the humanity closer together. There are the heroes that rise up. There are those that have great love for humanity that they never knew they had because it was kept within them. But now they see others suffering and so they will run to their side and help them with all of their ability. I think this is beautiful. Hmm. So when you, um, one of the questions we have, like I think it's one of the, Key questions, uh, Ram Das brings it up a lot. Uh, when you did your miracles, um, how conscious you were of what you're doing? Like, uh, were you, when you see the future or read somebody else's mind, are you aware of it? Is it, uh, is your intellectual part, is, was it uh, involved or was it just happening because of God spoke through you? Well, let me put it this way. I was aware of it, but I was, and I was aware that it was God. I was aware of it, but I was not taking credit for it. I was not. I was saying, oh God, is this another miracle? Thank you. And if it is, let it happen for the good of, the, for the good of mankind and for the good of others. So instead of taking the credit, I would let it flow out. I would let the miracle happen because God wanted it for them and because it was for God that they are getting this blessing and miracle. I am so happy for it. And so I let it go 
I let it happen. I let it be what it is. And the miracles happen. And I say, thank you, God. And they say, oh, thank you. Oh, it's you. And not me. No. If it were me, I would be very conceited and I would rise up and say, look at me. It's all me. It's not me. And so, therefore, I let it happen. And God saw that I was humble at that time and that he would allow, allow it to come through because he knew my head would not swell. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess, the key question is uh, how much of ego is healthy? Uh, ego is healthy. Uh, ego is healthy when you find yourself. When you find the true self and know the true self, that is the ego that is healthy. When the ego starts to put itself on others, that is unhealthy. What I am saying is this. When you realize who you are, when you are the true understanding that you are who you are supposed to be, and all that information is coming to you about who you are, that is wonderful. But if you start saying, ha ha, look at me, and saying to others, oh, I am better than you because of I have all these gifts and you don't, that is when the ego is, uh, needs to be beaten down. Yeah, you, like one of the qualities of yours, which uh, Ram Das and Krishna Das mentioned, are that you were very selfless. You were playing for others without actually being interested in, interested in anything for your own sake. And, y yes. and I, I find it's difficult for uh, my purposes. I need to achieve something, not only to be, but uh, I have a mission and a purpose, and uh, to achieve that, I need uh, basically to focus on my ego, to be taken care of ego and uh, making decisions, which is uh, maybe not that pleasant, but I guess it's uh, a tool for achieving things. Well, I was in a wonderful place. I could be selfless as much as I want and I still had very much support. I had the support of all those around me. And I could be selfless to a fault. And it was still, I had leftover, uh, I had leftover uh, abundance. Because people would give me and, and donate to me all the things that I needed for my survival. But... Yes, I, it was not that I wanted these things, and that is not why I did what I did, but I wanted to help and to bring this great thought process to them that um, God is love and that it, he is a giver and not a taker in many, many cases. He will not ask for much. Really, he doesn't. But he gives a great deal. After you left your body, uh, th uh, there was someone channeling you in, uh, I think, in New York City, and that's why Ram Das moved to New York City and lived there for uh, maybe three years, uh, trying to reconnect to you through these channelings. And then he got disappointed and left. So was it really you, or how much of you were, were, were there in these channelings? At first it was me, uh -huh. but then they got... A popular, they got very popular, and they started to bring in themselves because they learned so much from me, from channeling me, that they decided that they really didn't need to come in, me to come in. They knew me. So they started saying things that they knew that I would say. But when that happens, when that happens, it comes out insincere. Uh -huh. So there you have it. It's, uh, they become disillusioned because they think they know better than, than I do and better than God does. And they think they can do it better. 
So, but they cannot do it better because it shows people can see the truth. People see, uh -huh. the, people see the truth. If it's not me, they'll see it. I see. Uh, have you met dragons? How much are you connected to dragon energy? Dragon energy? Um, well, I have met dragons, of course, but they were not in dragon form. I asked them to change form so they could speak to me. Uh, but I have spoken to many dragons and they are fine. Their energy is very much like mine, especially the Ascended Masters ones, and the, mm -hmm. those that have found enlightenment. Enlightenment is very much the same everywhere. So yes, I have met them. Are you frozen? I think you are frozen. <laughs> That's what I feel, yeah. So I, have you been in a dragon in one of your lives? Hello, hello. So have yeah. you been a dragon in your lives? No, I have never been a dragon. Um, perhaps one day when I feel like being a dragon, maybe I will be, but I have really never really wanted that uh, life and I don't have to have it if I don't want to. Uh-huh. So a part of your uh, essence was to be a joker, right? A joker, uh, <laughs> a, a trickster, a trickster, and to challenge people. And for that, you have to be in peace with negativity and to be able actually to hurt people for their benefit. Ah, but there is many things that you can learn from being a trickster, a jokester. It's not necessarily negative if it teaches a, pos a positive lesson. You may, you may say, ah, it has detracted their attention to a different place. Yes, but in order to do that, you must have great positivity on your side because you may move a prisoners that do not belong in the prison, away from the prison by distracting, but not by negativity. <laughs> so there are many ways to look at it. I was not one, I was not working with negativity to do it. I did do some pranks, yes. <laughs> but, um, and some of them were funny and some of them uh, did uh, cause a little bit of, hmm, thought, but it was a momentary negativity and a greater world of positivity afterwards. Right, right. But it takes, a, it takes some sharpness of character, strength of character to be able to do that. Well, I do not say that I was very sharp in character, but I guess I had my ways. Uh, there was a legend that you were bilocated, that you were uh, at the same time in many places. Is it true? I could do that, yes. O only with God's help. Uh-huh. The reason for bilocation is that someone needs you somewhere else and you are not close by. Perhaps, um, let me give you an example. There um, was a lady in a village. She was on her deathbed. She had no um, family around her, but she was calling me and calling me because she knew that I would bless her before she died. Mm -hmm. And so there I went to her, I bilocated to her. She could see me, she could hear me, she could understand what I was saying, and I gave her the final blessing so that she would be comforted in that last moment before she passed on to the next world. And I say, God knew that that needed to happen. And when I, I felt that tug at me that I was leaving my body, at least part of me was, I said, for God, I will let it happen. And I was able to see that lady and her joy at that last moment when she took her final breaths, knowing that she had been blessed and that she was not alone in that final moment. Mm -hmm. And then also after, your, after the leaving the body, did you reappear in your body on the, on the planet? Um, yes. Uh -huh. It is possible to do these things with the help of God. 
Uh-huh. Ah, and they thought it was a trick. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. At first they thought it was a trick. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> um, so in Indian culture, there is uh, no special place for angels, but uh, in... Um, you know, I, I talk to them and uh, in here in the West, the angels are big. How, can you explain that? Well, now I know about angels. Angels are not, uh, to have a great spiritual life, you do not have to have angels in it. But they are very wonderful beings. And to me, it was like meeting aliens because I had never met them before or never knew of them before really until I met them. And so at that point, I was saying, ah, oh, this is wonderful. I, and so you work with the earth? Oh, that is beautiful. I think it's a wonderful thing. Just because I didn't know or didn't call on angels, that does not mean that they were not important and they are not important today. They are. They're, even, they are actually in, in this culture much more than you think at this time. They are making a strong comeback. Uh, so you met them only after coming to the spirit, after leaving the body? Yes, there was no need for me to meet them before. I mean, I mean, I met them before I came to this body, uh, the, the body anyway, but I did not remember them during this lifetime. The thing is, when I went back to the Oversoul, I remembered them again, and it was like, oh, yes, I just did not need them for the, the role I played in that particular lifetime. And although they might have helped me here and there with some things, I might, uh-huh. not, I might not have known it. I did not know it. Oh, I see. So uh, do you have anything to add about Lucifer? Yes. What, well, he is. Do you have any? Well, you are breaking up very badly right now, so I, I'm Personal not sure. Personal experiences. Ah, experiences with Lucifer. You broke up. I could not hear what you said. Yes. Uh, I have experiences with Lucifer. Do you know I I met him, yes. Uh-huh. I do, we did not, um, we did not talk very long. He has a different philosophy of how things should be than I do. But I, I saw that he definitely has a purpose. And um, so be it. Let him do it. Mm-hmm. So but what I, is a... uh, he's not one of my best friends right now. But I don't need that right now. But um, I, I respect what he is doing. And um, I will let him do that. And um, But for now, I would rather to be with positive realms and doing things of, of, of only good and positivity. Uh-huh. Um. Uh. So, um, just a second. Do you, um, who, who should you think uh, I, I should meet uh, through Jim, like through channeling of Jim? Who should I invite for, for more uh, conversations? Oh, there are so many out there that would be very helpful for, for many different reasons. Are you looking for a spiritual leader? Uh, I'm open to different suggestions. No, no restrictions. Well... The one called Martin Luther King huh. Jr. He is so amazing to me. What he went through in his life on your planet is, is sad but beautiful in many ways. Mm-hmm. And he made such a difference. I, I like him a lot. He, he strikes me as very genuine and beautiful. And... I liked him a lot. We talk every now and then. And yes, and all the other Babas that there are. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular you would like to recommend? 
No, just all of them are good. I would not want to pick one over the other. They would, they would be going, why didn't you pick me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I listened to Martin Luther King today and yesterday, his speeches. Uh-huh. And so perhaps that's why I pulled that out of your brain a little bit. Uh-huh. He is amazing, um, don't you think? Also, I think that um, um, some of those, uh, the popes from the, the distant past might be interesting for you to speak to. They weren't all that loving and good, many of them, and they were in it for very bad reasons. But now that they are in the Oversoul, much different. So which one would you recommend? Um, Hmm, that's a good question. I would say uh, uh, the ninth one, the Pope nine, number nine. All right, thank you. I also had a, a wonderful experience with uh, Amma, uh, a female guru who travels the world and uh, a friend recommended that I meet her and she's, uh, she was in Los Angeles and I met her. and. Uh, she hugged me, she healed by hugging, and uh, I started crying, and that was a wonderful release. Like, I cried for maybe the next uh, big time, and then uh, uh, that was a big release. And also it happened to you many times that people come to you, and you do something, and then they start crying. Of Can course. you comment on, on the physics of that? What is actually happen happening? The physics are this. They come into contact with the Spirit of God, the true spirit is there, and it strikes something within them. It makes them, it, it starts to cleanse them and make them whole again. And they weep out much of the, of the negativity that they were holding in. They are cleansed after they have, have uh, started to weep this out. The spirit of God has cleansed them because they have come in contact with it. Is that how uh, you... Yes, I, I, of, of course, yes. Well, uh, also, is... there was a yeah. similar question, um, also some sort of a miracle, which is very, very mechanically, ex obviously expressed. There was a... Uh, uh, Yogananda speaks about it when... Uh, a master, a baba, uh, a guru, taps on the heart, and the person gets in a, some spiritual state where uh, the person unites with the, with everything around with the universe. Yes, but they have to be ready for that. That is not uh, something you could do with everyone. Uh huh. But there are those that you know. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. I would like to experience that from both sides. I want to receive it and I want to be able to give it. But it is something that is very special. That when you are ready for it and someone does this for you, you will experience a great enlightenment. You will experience the, the universe coming to you and letting you know all the love that is there. You will feel a great excitement about it. Yes. And to be able to do it is to not know what is happening with them, because it is a unique experience for them. Your experience will be different than anyone else's. <laughs> You're close to God, so <laughs> I would like to pass my uh, gratitude. There is uh, lots of miracles happening in the last few days and maybe a couple of weeks. It's just amazing what, ha what is happening. Lots of, lots of help arrived. Uh, when it was needed, and I was able to recognize that it was a pure miracle. So I'm just really help, happy with it the help. It is a miracle. When you are given over to God's love, when you know that he is working for you, will he not continue to give you the miracles that you need? Yes. He will give them to you, and he will be happy to do it. Yeah, I, I received so much help. Thank you. And, um, yes. I would like to also, one, one thing I'm working now, like hard work is a uh, child uh, bringing up children. 
uh, working with difficult children and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, can you, for the closing, can you give us a gen general blessing and maybe on the topics which I touched? Oh my, there was many topics. Yeah, children is uh, number one. How do you remain positive while there is a, a lot of negativity remember, with the child? Remember that children are people too. But they are special people because they don't know everything that you know. <laughs> but they think they do. <laughs> uh -huh. So I will give you a blessing. Thank you. Oh my God. There is so much that we do not know about the universe and about you and about love and about children and about the way that life goes on. There are so many mysteries in the life of a human being. Bring some light to this so that we may open up the hearts of the children to know that they are loved and that the guidance that they need is not just from their parents, but from you and from all your eternal wisdoms. We know that children have their own world that they live in. And sometimes it it's too absorbent and they are absorbed so much they cannot see the truth about how life is. Let them know that there is somewhere outside of this world that there is love also coming in. There is love to be had from those that are around and from God. Help us to notify our children that God exists in one way or another. And then miracles are possible when they know that God exists. If you let them know what God can do. Many blessings to all those around the world. You are loved, and there are many of you that need to stand up and need to declare the love of God so that he may work in you in a greater way, so that he may work in you in the ways that he wants, not just the ways that you want. I could pray all day long, and I do sometimes, but let me cut it short because... I want to say, I love thee, O God, and all that is yours, and all that you give, and all that we understand of you, and all that is poured out upon us in the words and in the wisdoms of many. Show us the right lights so that we may be in the brightness of your love. Amen. Thank you.